Hey, Apply30, just before our final assessment, I just want to show you how you can use stats. Um, and here's just an example to, to work through. So using stats in real life, um, we have an arcade example. One of your classmates, uh, Nicholas, is uh, really into arcades and um, he's been collecting some data for us and I wanted to show you how you can use that to, to work with your stats. Now, just on a side note, if you've never been to an arcade before, you definitely should try it out. It's a pretty sweet, uh, sweet way to spend some time. And keep that in mind for when, uh, when self-isolation and, and keeping social distancing and all that dies down a bit. There's some really good places around the, uh, the city. So first, we're gonna try understanding how an arcade works. Typically, you spend some money for some credits, you spend the credits on the games, and if you do well in the games, you win some tickets. So we've already determined what the cost of one credit is going to be. It's about 19 cents per credit. And there's not really any crazy math to, uh, to solving that, but for the sake of time, I've cut that part out. So if you can trust me on it, approximately 19 cents for one credit. And just below, we've got a bit of a table here set up. Each of these are going to be trials of a person using credits and how many tickets they've won, and then we'll calculate the dollars per ticket. Uh, what Nicholas has done is he's gone to an arcade a number of times, and I'll show you what some of those stats are. We're going to treat every single one of his visits as a separate person visiting and playing at the arcade. So this is where you have to do a bit of work. You have to tally how many credits you've been spending, and you have to also record how many tickets you've won. So I've put down the first 10 trials here. Again, we're going to assume that each of these trials is a completely different person, and then we can compare them. And the tickets you win is, are typically large numbers. That's the way the arcade works. Uh, once you win tickets, you can trade those tickets in for various prizes. Uh, some places have some nice prizes that you can get, and some of them are just novelties. That's essentially what Winnipeg has, but usually bigger numbers. Now, just as an aside, um, we can go back to our measurement unit and take advantage of the values we have here. For example, tickets won, the credits used, and the cost of one credit. And we can use something like a spreadsheet, in this case Excel, to calculate how many dollars we're spending per ticket. So I'm just setting up my equation to, uh, to calculate that. Um, you'll see some dollar signs going into my equation. Those just lock specific values so they never change. That's a bit of a we have an Excel technique. Um, I might have to show you what that is some other time. Uh, either way, though, we can calculate that it costs approximately one penny per ticket. So it's a really small amount. And that's actually why our kids use novelty prizes, uh, because you're not actually spending a lot of money to, to get the prizes. So they're usually cheap things, but some of the nicer places have some, some nicer prizes. And I'm just going to highlight um, this equation for the rest of my trials, and everything is calculated for me. Now, just to skip ahead here, I wanted to show you something that, uh, that Nicholas has, has put together. Uh, these are his stats. Um, and he's got a lot of data points. And that's the key. When you're doing statistics, the more data points you have, the more accurate your data is going to be. So really grateful that, um, that he's put this together. I've only used a small sample size from that, but we're going to use this to calculate the Z scores and compare each of those separate trials. So the first thing I've done is calculate the, uh, the mean. Uh, that's just an average calculation on Excel. So equals average, and then you highlight all your data points. Uh, again, that's probably the first thing that we did in stats. And then right next to that, I've calculated the standard deviation. So this tells me on average how much I'm spending per ticket and then the fluctuations as well. And there's some notes there on how much you'd be spending. So anywhere between 0.2 to 0.8 of a cent. So a very, very small amount. But where does this come into play? Well, we can't compare these results. Again, remember each of these trials, we're pretending that each of them is a separate person or a separate trial. We need to calculate the Z scores to do that. Thankfully, the formula requires us to have a value a mean and a standard deviation, and we have all three of those. So we can set up another equation to solve that for us. And on Excel, it's really nice because you can set up every single tile to do that math for you. Ta -da. And then our final step is to go into our table in the back of our textbook and calculate the relative percentages for each of those Z scores. So I've picked two examples here. In the very first trial, which was a 1.9 Z score, we end up getting a score of about 97%. And one of the later trials looks like the fifth trial we end up with a z-score of negative 0.28, which leaves us with a percentage of 38.9% or 39%. What does that mean? Well, the person that attempted trial one, they scored better than 97% of the people. Person two only scored better than 39% of the people. So it's just an interesting take on how you can use stats to understand your life a little bit better. Whether you go to arcades or not, you know, I don't expect everyone to be doing this kind of statistics, but it's interesting that we can calculate these kinds of things if we choose to put our education to use in that sense. Anyways, I just want to share that with you. Uh, thank you, Nicholas, for uh, getting the data put together. If there's anything else that I can present with the data, I'll, I'll see about, um, about setting it up. Take care, guys.